I moved to another country where I didn't speak the language. I didn't have a job. I was doing dishes, uh, cleaning toilets. I promised myself, I said, I'm just going to go back to engineering now because I don't want to work uh, in yeah. hospitality jobs anymore. How humbling did it have to be you having an engineering degree, having to do all those jobs? You got to be thankful to that Mexican guy playing reggaeton on top of you, <laughs> pushing you over the edge. <laughs> What's up guys, welcome to another video and today's guest has an amazing story. His name is Gabriel Ribeiro, he's a structural engineer originally from Brazil, was an engineer over there and left Brazil to go to Australia and start from the bottom. He started washing dishes, he started cleaning toilets and worked his way up to, to get to where he is today. Now. The story is not only amazing, but also what's amazing is the way that he went about finding jobs and adapting to a new country. And of course, he's going to give his best tips to young engineers who are entering industry, who are just graduating so that you can make the most, the best experience for yourself. After this episode, guys, I'm telling you, there really is no excuse to not get jobs as a young engineer, as Gabriel is gonna show us his way of doing it. So with all that being said, make sure that you like this video. If you find it useful, might as well just like it right now. Help YouTube promote it so that we can reach more young audience and to help more young engineers like yourselves. And hey, if you are an immigrant young engineer, then this video is going to hit home even harder. So with all that being said, subscribe to the channel, like the video, and let's get right into it. We were talking about PE licenses, right? Professional engineering licenses here in the US. You, you mentioned that Australia has something different, equivalent. Yeah, we've got the registered professional engineer. So I mm. live in Queensland. Yeah. There is a qualification called RPQ, which mm. is the, if you, if you want to be the responsible, the technical responsible for the project, you got to have this, um, this qualification. Yeah. And you only get that after you you have worked a certain number of years and you have some some points with the Australian engineer. You've got there, there's a lot of um, a lot of requirements to get this um, mm -hmm. this you certification. Know, this yeah. Yeah, yeah. This certification exactly. Got it. Yeah. yeah. Some some states are different. You know, if you go to if you move to New South Wales, where you know Sydney, for example, mm -hmm. um, you. You might not need that. You might you can just get your your certification with the Australian your diploma. If you are an immigrant, you, you should get your diplomas. Um, um, you know, you should get your diploma. How do you say like when you're um, when you graduate uh, college? Yeah, yeah. You know, when you um, you just get your diploma certified by the Engineers Australia. Mm. You know, like, because if you if you studied, let's say I studied in Brazil, yeah, um, my what do they know about Brazilian right, right, right. Brazilian engineering? You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So you got to come here and you got to validate your diploma with the with the Engineers Australia. Engineers Australia is an organization here that looks after all the engineers. So that that's pretty much it. So it, it varies from state to state. Yeah. If you want to be responsible for the project, you got to look at the legislation on your state and make sure you you meet all the requirements. Gotcha. Yeah, here in the United States for the PE, I'm not sure. I'm sure it's a similar process if you study. So I'm from Peru. And if you come from Peru and then let's say you're an engineer, I don't know the process exactly what you go through. Uh, to get your, I'm sure you're going to have to translate it. I'm not sure you have to take tests or anything like that. Uh, that's why I was saying that if I went to Australia, I mean, I would love to know that information. And then it seems like you, you know, all that stuff. Um, there is a, uh, so I was telling you about my friend, Mo. He is a, he's a professional engineer. When I talked to him for the first time last year, he wasn't yet. So at that time he was, uh, he was doing a lot of side hustles, uh, doing a lot of CAD work for the professional engineers. So he had already built a network in construction management. People knew him. And uh, he started doing a lot of CAD work on the side for a bunch of professional engineers uh, doing, pla uh, what, what would you call, uh, like drawings and things like that, right? And I mean, he told me that, yo, he's like, I'm, I'm doing very well. If you ever need work, like doing some CAD work, just... 
let me know. I have a, I have a lot of professional engineers, uh, friends that they give me work and, and that, I mean, you, you make basically another small salary and that that's a lot. That's definitely an opportunity that you can take advantage of, you know? I mean, but because you're good yeah. at CAD, you're good at CAD and like the, the, the whole si simulating and modeling. That's what I was saying about consulting. If you were ever, if you ever thought about that. Yeah, true. I, I thought about that, you know, yeah. I thought about building my own company, creating my own, my own business. Yeah. But at the, I don't know. I feel like when it, when we, when it comes to engineering, it's something that you gotta be really, really careful about because you're, you're dealing with people's, people's dreams and people's lives. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I'm only 30 years old and I don't want to really go on this adventure right now and doing mm. things by myself. Got it. Mean, like, I'm, I'm really, I'm really confident on design structures. Yeah. But there's, there's a lot into building your own company. You know what I mean? Right. Am right. I one day, am I, the, what I think is one day I'm going to just, I'm going to start slowly. I'm just, yeah. you know, I'm, I'm getting, you're gonna get one client, you know. Ah, can you design this house? And I'll design yeah. the house, and then that client, you know, is gonna refer me to another person, maybe a friend, yeah. and then I'll get another client, and things slowly will progressing. That's yeah. that's that's my idea. Yeah. Um, but at the moment, uh, I want a side hustle that, firstly, doesn't require me to spend more time because I already work 40 hours a week, you know, yeah. so I want something, I want to develop a product that can, you know, can, can work for itself. Like passive, without. passive income, basically. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. A passive income yeah, yeah. requires, you know, yeah, like, yeah. It requires a lot of input in the beginning, but, yeah. but that's pretty much it. But the goal, yeah, man, the goal is, is, is building my own company. Do you, do you plan on building your own company or no nah, not for engineering and to be honest uh i've been away from the technical like hardcore technical work that mechanical engineers do i've been away from that for the last uh i want to say maybe three years four years um i've been kind of like going up the chain a little bit and it's more of a project management it's been more of a risk management things along those lines that are more project related like schedule cost what can go wrong? How can we fix it? Things like that. As opposed to more running the project as opposed to or the design as opposed to doing the design itself. So I've been, uh, I moved away from that. Last time I did a research and development was in, I left my job in 2018. Yeah, so I did that for three years. And before that, I was doing uh, installations, removals of equipment, dealing with AutoCAD mechanical. I uh, also was doing uh, logistics, doing uh, lube oil, lubricant analysis, like de dealing with chemical compositions and doing maintenance on ships. So I'm kind of like more steered away from that. And I like it better, to be honest. Uh, it's, it's a different so side. So what do you of... do nowadays? So nowadays, actually, I do risk management, which is completely unrelated. I deal with a lot of the engineers, a lot of the mechanical guys, the electrical guys. Uh, dealing with batteries and generators and turbines, but uh, but I'm more on the side of. Do you know what risk management is at all? Have you heard of it? Yeah, I have an idea. Yeah, yeah, I have an idea. Yeah, so you basically look at the development, the whole schedule, the whole design process, and then you say, okay, what can go wrong? <laughs> What's a risk? What's at risk? And somebody comes back and says, you know what, the generator right now. I don't think we're going to have that part made in time. And so the risk manager says, okay, what's it going to take? Why, why is the part not going to come here on time? And you start digging into, okay, well, there's no material. The manufacturer doesn't have enough time. There's lonely time material. So, so you start going into those layers on finding out why that part can't make it. And then you start thinking of ideas and plans. Okay, how can we actually make that? make the deadline you know so you start dealing with a lot with the engineers and asking questions so so it's very schedule based um that in cost because obviously like the longer it takes then the more costly it becomes things get delayed 
So you want so the whole so the whole point of uh, risk management is to keep the project on schedule within budget. That's the whole point of it, and meeting the milestones and. So that's that's basically what I do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. definitely. Like <laughs> Not a project manager. Yeah, like exactly. You work. Manager, eh? Yeah, you work with the project manager very, very closely. Yeah, for sure. But yeah, so oh, yeah. so how about you, man? How do you get started in engineering? Why did you become a structural, a civil engineer, or structural? Do you, do you go in Brazil? Yeah, yeah, I did university in Brazil. Yeah, um, and it was it, it was a bit random because. My all my my family is from the Air Force, mm. so it was either in my mind I would either become a pilot for the yeah. Air Force, or I would you know go to university. That was yeah. pretty much back then that, that that's what I had in mind. And yeah. I was good at maths. I was good at physics. Yeah. So you know, like what profession I'm gonna choose? You know, maths, yeah. physics. Okay, engineering. Which yeah. engineering? I had no idea. Mechanical <laughs> engineering, civil engineering. Right. Okay. The, those back then, civil engineering, mechanical engineering, and um, electrical engineer was the three ones that I had in mind. Some and the one, the the, the most popular ones. Um, and so what? What I did, I I took a test for different universities. Mm. and different engineering. Okay, so in Brazil, if you if you go for a public university, you don't need to pay for your studies. So it's mm. everything free. Mm -hmm. And they're the best universities. So what I tried all the, the federal universities because they were free and they were yeah. the best ones. So what I did, I tried mechanical engineering in one university in one place. And then I tried civil engineering in another place, tried. I mean, mm. I, I took the test, right? I took the test to yeah. get into the university because it's a very competitive test. Yeah, because it's free, right? It's right, free university, right. so everybody wants to get into those universities. And I ended up passing for civil engineering in a city that was six hundred k's away from my city, mm -hmm. and I passed for mechanical engineering in a university in my own city mm. but back then i was 17 years old and i wasn't much concerned about engineering to be honest the only thing i'll, I'll be very honest with you what i wanted is to have a good time at university yeah. right? but if i stayed if i if i did mechanical engineering i would be i would stay living with my parents in my yeah. own city <laughs> or if i did Civil engineering. I would yeah. be six hundred k's away from them. <laughs> and, oh, that's hilarious! And, and that's, how, that's how I chose civil engineering. Ah. And I moved. I moved to another state. I moved to another city. Seventeen years old, living by myself. You know, living the life. Living the dream. <laughs> oh wow, that's awesome! What's the name of the Brazilian university you got into? So it's um, Federal University of Ouro Preto. So it's it's uh, the name of the city. It's the name yeah. of the city. That, um, yeah, it's. I mean, if you're not Brazilian, it's, yeah, it's yeah, a bit yeah. hard to. Yeah, how yeah. how about give me a point of reference? How far is that from uh, the coast? From Rio, let's say that's er everyone knows Rio. How far is that from Rio? <laughs> is it like um, deep, deep in the center of Brazil, like in that area? No, 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 no. It's it's Curitiba. It's closed. It, it's it's north. North Curitiba of Curitiba. Is south. Mm. Yeah. Maybe three hundred Ks from from Sao Paulo or oh, okay. or Rio or Rio. You know? Got it, got it. Yeah, I have a four hundred. I have a friend who recently went to Brazil to do his uh well, he's originally from Brazil, then he came here to the United States and then he's doing his master's degree in computer science, but he's doing it online. So he went back to Brazil to just finish it over there and it's a really, really smart guy. To do a master's in computer science. <laughs> uh, so, so you mentioned. So, how did you go to Australia? How did you end up there? Yeah. So, um, I used to work in a multinational corporation, and mm. it was a multinational corporation with over four thousand employees, 
all around the world, right? And yeah. we used to get we used to get um, managers and engineers coming from Europe and visit the the company, visit mm-hmm. the factory and everything. Yeah, that was that was my first job. Well, I was a graduate engineer, and those guys they obviously didn't speak Portuguese. So the only ones who could communicate with them in the company were the people who spoke English back then, right? Mm-hmm. Not that I had to communicate with them because I was only a graduate engineer, you know, like I was a grad. It wasn't my job to... Was it like your first year? First year? It was my first, my first year, exactly, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. It was my first year after graduating. Mm-hmm. And... There was something that let me really frustrated, you know, like you, you, you can't talk to someone. And, and I soon realized that if I wanted to move up in my career, English would be indispensable. You know, if, if you're mm. working on a multinational corporation, right, you, can right. just tell, you can just tell that you got a liaise with people from another country, you know, mm-hmm. a company that has 4,000 people around the world. And your company has only maybe a hundred people, so that means the other three thousand nine hundred people don't speak, yeah. Yeah, don't speak their language. So you, yeah. how are you going to talk to them? Yeah, you know what I mean that that was one of the reasons. And in Australia, it's it was more like a um, a dream, you know, mm-hmm. some yeah. something. You know, when you're young, when you're young and you want to live abroad, yeah, there was there was pretty much there was. Um, also something that that you know um that made me want to live abroad you know yeah. when i was at, when i was at um high school i had friends who did part of their high school in canada or ireland mm. and i didn't have any financial condition back then to yeah you know to, to do that and so fortunately you know after working a year as an engineer i managed to save up money and and do this travel, you know, go yeah. on this, go on this journey. So that was, yeah. that was pretty much it. That was pretty so, much it. So did you, did you get promoted in the multinational company or do you saw, you saw a position that was open in Australia and they were like, I'm applying to that. I'm going there. Like, how did, how did you, how do you transfer? Is it the same company still? No, it's not, it's not the same company. I had, mm. I, I had to, to leave the company. Yeah. Ah. I said, I stayed there. I stayed there for only for a year. So I worked there for a year. Throughout this year, just saving money. The company would give me accommodation. Uh, they would give me food. They would give me, you know, my my salary. Yeah. So I'm, I was I wasn't spending money with anyone. Wow. Yeah. And there was a year just saving up money. No, less than a year. I think it was ten months. And yeah. with ten months, ten months, I was able to save up money. Mm. To pay for an English course here in Australia, mm. I paid for six months English course in advance. Um, I paid for a couple of weeks of accommodation, and I paid for my my tickets to to Australia. That was that was pretty much it. And then when I get when I got here, I had to find find work, and you know, yeah, you went to the whole. Yeah. You you were like Brazil, I'm out. <laughs> how are our engineers our engineers get paid well in brazil they they do man they do they, they do. do get paid well yeah mm. um i was i i was on a very good pay mm. even as a graduate engineer the thing is in brazil there's a there's a huge disparity social disparity you know mm. so if you're not if you are not an engineer, if you're not a lawyer, if you're not a doctor, you pretty much, you, you know, it, you're not gonna live a very, um, you know, very good life. To be honest, yeah. Um, while in Australia, this doesn't happen. You can work as a as a labor in, in yeah. construction, and you're gonna get paid as well as the engineer who designed the building that yeah. the labor is working working yeah. on you know what i mean um yeah. but the but the salaries they're, they're very comparable the thing is your your buying power in australia is way higher than your buying power in brazil you know mm. what i mean let's say i get let's say i get five thousand 
five thousand um, money here in yeah. Australia, yeah. and I get five thousand money in Brazil. You know, yeah. regardless of the currency. Yeah. If I wanna buy, if I wanna buy a car here, I'm gonna pay ten times less than what I would pay in Brazil, mm. even though my salary would be the same. I would have to spend way more over there. Right. Do you know what I mean? So that's the, the, the correlation that I do when I, when I try to compare. You know, yeah. Compare. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. So how was your transition to Australia? So when you first arrived, did you miss Brazil at all? Or you were just like, I'm just glad I'm out. And then time for a new beginning and, how how do you how do you adapt to a new culture and were you here by yourself too? Yeah, yeah. I came by myself and I'm not gonna lie, it was super hard. It was yeah. a challenge. Imagine moving to I mean you are you from Peru or are you from Yeah, I'm from Peru. Yeah. I came here when I was uh sixteen years old. And um I came here with uh so my, my parents were already here. So, okay, yeah. so, so it's, it's, I have family already here. Uh, and so that transition, it was still a little difficult because I had left my girlfriend, ex-girlfriend, obviously, uh, my friends, my, I have family in Peru. And then I was living with my aunt back then. So you basically are living a culture, traditions, a whole new different lifestyle. And then you come here, right? So it's like a different like culture shift and mindset. It's like very different. Um, but yeah, I have family. Fortunately. Yeah, exactly. It's, yeah, so you, you pretty much, you, you know what I'm saying, but I moved to another country where I didn't speak the language. I didn't have a job. I didn't have experience. As I said, I, was, I had worked only for yeah, one year. Yeah. Not even a year. Yeah, ten, it was 10 months in a company. <laughs> yeah. And yeah. So what I'm going to do here, I had money for three weeks. So after three weeks, after three weeks, uh, I would have to start working. Yeah. One month, I think it was one month. Yeah, after a month, I would have to start working. And it was all right because I, I got I got a job in my second week here. Um, that was I, mowing lawn. Yeah, yeah. It wasn't wasn't anything in engineering, man. It took me a while. We can get into that later, but it took me a while to get a job in engineering um, as an engineer. And I started mowing the lawn with a guy. Yeah. Uh, how, how do you how do you meet this guy? So okay, so walk me through. So Gabriel arrives in Australia. What's the first thing you do? Yeah. <laughs> you get lost. You get lost. <laughs> what do you do, bro? I yeah. I don't know, man. I, I remember <laughs> I was in the airport. I mean, I remember I was in the airport, and I. I didn't know how to talk to anyone. I was yeah. like, what am I doing? I only had uh, my student exchange um, agency, student agency, and they would text me, just go to this place, take a bus, and mm. I'll meet you at this place. And that was pretty much it. So I had, I had this, um, um, you know, this, my agenda of the things that I needed to do. Yeah. And I got to the airport. I took the train. Um, and I was just like, how do I make the train stop? I was like, I need to, I need, I need to get out here. I started asking people, where do I press here to stop? Yeah, and, yeah. I was just like, and there was a Brazilian dude. Oh, really? Brazilian dude there. there was a Brazilian dude in the train and he told me, no, don't worry. It's going to stop every, in every train station. Yeah, yeah. So you don't, don't freak. And I was just like, okay, cool. And <laughs> that was pretty much it. And um you know so I, I i had a an accommodation paid for two weeks in mm -hmm. with this um uh student student agency yeah and then i after a month i had to get a job i remember my first after the, this um this guy where i started my first job mowing the law it didn't yeah. last a week because he, he wasn't patient enough Mm. I, I couldn't understand him and he was yeah. getting so mad frustrated yeah, yeah. Was so frustrated yeah it, and uh, you know he wasn't patient enough and i decided to leave yeah um and then my other job i got a 
that was the happiest day of my life, man. I got a job. That was when I got a job at Domino's Pizza. At Domino's? Domino's Pizza delivering pizzas. Yeah? You know? Yeah. I was like, I was going to my um, English school. I was yeah. in the train. I was, I was on the train going to my English school. And I got a call. I got a call from a from the manager at Domino's Pizza. And he called me and he said, Oh, I saw that you applied online for a position at Domino's Pizza. Do you want to come for an interview on this day? And I was just like, yeah, yeah, sure, sure. Um, and then I was like, which day is that, man? <laughs> he said, he said Thursday or Tuesday. Yeah. But back then, I didn't know the difference yeah. between <laughs> Thursday and Tuesday. Yeah, they're pretty similar. And I was like, what am I gonna do now? Yeah. <laughs> and then I went to school. I spent. I was so anxious. I went to school. After I finished school, um, I went to that place. I went to the Domino's Pizza. Yeah. Right. I stopped there, and then I talked to the manager. I said, hey, "I was just walking past here. Um, you know, I got a call from one of you guys. Yeah, I just yeah. want to confirm, or just just want to double check the day of the interview." And then he said, oh, yeah, it's going to be tomorrow. There was, I think that was a Monday, so that's going to be tomorrow. And I was like, okay, cool, thank you. And then since this day, now I know, you know. Like it, <laughs> it was that Tuesday. <laughs> Tuesday, Tuesday, yeah. That day made me mer memorize every day of the week. It was crazy. Yeah. It was like, yeah. How, how do you say oh, Tuesday in, in Portuguese? Uh, Terça. Ah, Terza. Oh, oh, it's kind of like, kind of like. So, but now I see it's even more confusing because it sounds like a combination of Thursday and Tuesday. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. That, that was the thing. The, yeah, it was oh, super. Oh wow! In Portuguese, it's even more confusing. And like in Spanish, it's super simple because it's like the in English is confusing, but in Spanish is Martes, which is really easy. Martes, Tuesday. Martes is Tuesday, and then Jueves is Thursday. So there's like a big difference in Spanish. But in Brazil, yeah. in uh, Portuguese, it's like... <laughs> yeah, but th Thursday is Quinta. quinta ah, Feira. Quinta. Ah. So it's, it's, you know, it's... I can see, I can see. Oh, oh, yes, definitely confusing. <laughs> so so you yeah, got that yeah, job exactly. at Domino's. And what was that? What was that the best job? Is that, were you, were you happy because you got the interview? Or were you happy because you were working there at Domino's? No, I was happy because... Uh, I was able to get a job without speaking English. Oh, right. It's just like, like driving. and Yeah, I was delivering pizzas and I was making... You, you make good money here, right? You make good money regardless of the job that you get. Do <laughs> right, you know right. what I mean? So yeah. I could pay my bills. I could make, make ends meet working as a delivery driver. And it's it was my, my first job as a... As a um, with a contract signed you know yeah like, yeah yeah you've got a job now yeah it wasn't a full-time job or anything like that it was even casual but it, it wasn't a company that you a, a reliable company let's say yeah i got gotcha, before yeah. before before that i was you know as i said i was mowing the law i was um doing whatever man i was doing dishes um yeah. i was cleaning toilets i was doing whatever you you know whatever sh popped up i was, yeah. I was doing it and try, I was like, trying to pay yeah. the rent yeah exactly yeah yeah, yeah. and that's why i was the happiest day of my life yeah. i was like yeah dude now i've, I've got something <laughs> like i've got a job yeah and yeah yeah for just, sure so little, so go ahead yeah. it's just the little things that make you happy you know like in, yeah in life it's so those, those things your your accomplishments and they might sound, you know, like they might sound very, um, a very small thing, very yeah. little, you know, but it's it's just you going through to make you understand. You, you got to go through those things, those challenges to understand um, right. how things work, you know what I mean? No, for yeah. sure. Yeah, it's, it's my, my, when I first got here to the United States, I already knew a little bit of English. Uh, I arrived to the airport in Miami and my mom told me, go get me some quarters 
but of course I have to speak English to do that. And so my mom gives me a dollar, a bill. And then, so I start, I grab it and I start walking towards the cashier. It was like a cashier, big sign in the middle of the airport. So I start walking and as I'm walking towards the cashier, my hands start sweating. I start practicing in my mind, like what I'm going to say exactly. I start repeating it. This is what I need to say. This is how I need to say it. This is how fast I need to say it. And so, <laughs> so I'm literally trembling and I go up to the, there's this like, I go up to the cashier. There's this like black polarized window and just like a little thing where you put in the money, right? You put in the money and I say, I need quarters. And I start sweating. I, I go to, <laughs> and then literally 10 seconds later, I see four quarters, like the coins show up and I was like, ah, oh, thank God it worked. So that's probably the closest it gets. <laughs> <laughs> to having that realization being in a new country and that's like the first english words that i ever said here i need quarters uh yeah. but yeah <laughs> the little things the little things <laughs> the, the little things yeah yeah i think confidence eh? as soon as it's as soon as you start building up the confidence to to approach people and mm. talking to them that's yeah. when you start improving as well you know yeah that's, that's 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 one thing that i always advise people you got to you got to put yourself in um, uncomfortable situations. Mm. You know what I mean? Otherwise, otherwise you're not going to grow. You're not going to learn. I remember I had to do a, um, a, a pitch to, I'd say, 50 people mm -hmm. here in Australia. Yeah. There was a, there was a it's called um, Startup Weekend on the Gold Coast. And I had to do a pitch on a product to 50 people. And... That was my, I think my second year in Australia. I was just trying to put myself in situations um, where I would be able to learn something new. Mm. And then I signed up for this uh, weekend startup. And mm. I had to pitch a product for, to, to like pitch 50 people as a product. And, and then after that, we would form groups and spend the weekend trying to sell that product, you know, trying to create right. that product. Got and, it. I remember these days, you know, things that you never forget. And those, that weekend was one of those because you had to be interviewed in the camera and I was sweating, man. I was sweating. I was, my heart just like racing. Yeah. And I, I have the videos. I have the videos and I can't even watch it. I get so embarrassed. I get so embarrassed. Oh, that's hilarious. It was just like, so <laughs> ugly and i got so embarrassed of watching and she put that on youtube man reacting to my uh, first sales pitch <laughs> <laughs> i will one day will. bro that would be epic that's hilarious <laughs> so how did you get that into engineer engineering job after the pizza after the pizza gig what happened yeah um pretty much i worked after that i worked in a lot of restaurants and I did different a variety of different jobs. Mm -hmm. One day, do you know uh GYG? Guzman and Gomez? Uh GYG. It was a, like, a, like a Mexican GYG. Like a Mexican restaurant. GYG. No, I don't no. Guz, I, I don't. Guz, Guzman and Gomez. Uh it's a it's just a it's a Mexican restaurant. I was working for this Mexican restaurant mm -hmm. and there was maybe I was here in Australia already had maybe three three years three yeah three years I think yeah and everybody in this restaurant Mexican restaurant they were speaking Spanish right you you would you would like that yeah I'll I'll, I'll blend in I'll blend right in yeah <laughs> you would blend in very well yeah <laughs> and I I was the only Brazilian there. there was another Brazilian but she would she wouldn't work the same time as as I would. Yeah, and then everybody just speaking in Spanish and reggaeton, <laughs> like reggaeton every time. And I was the guy just flipping the chicken and flipping the meat, and the the speakers were just on my face, you know. And yeah. there was there was slowly just you know destroying my patience and everything. <laughs> and then one day, yeah. I, one day I got home. <laughs> I was so pissed off. I was so pissed off. Then I got home, I took a shower and yeah. I sent, I sent like maybe 30 emails with my resume. 
to mm. different engineering companies. Just, just I like that. Just suddenly. Just like that, all of a sudden, I promised myself. I said, "I'm just gonna go back to engineering now because I don't want to work in yeah. hospitality jobs anymore." That at that, at that point, at that point, you already spoke English decently. Like you already like it was, good. Yeah, yeah, three years, three years in Australia. Oh, okay. It was, yeah, yeah, it was right, right. Yeah, mm -hmm. I mean, I'm still learning nowadays, but you know Dude, same 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah i've been here 12 <laughs> years i've been here no i've been here 15 years and i still ask my wife what does this mean again like what does this mean and it's, <laughs> and, and it's funny because people think sometimes that i that i speak english like 100 percent, and sometimes some words that i say come out wrong and they look at me right. and, and but i don't i don't sometimes i'm just like ah, whatever i just get over it like i just change the subject <laughs> anyway yeah. sorry so so you so you sent these applications and then what happened yeah exactly i sent several applications do you think there was a i think there was on on sunday so i wasn't expecting anything really soon but in the next morning on a monday i got up early um i printed printed out all my res like I printed maybe 10, 20 resumes, everything that I sent to the companies. And then I went to these companies that I emailed them. I knocked on their door and said, oh, can I can I speak to the manager? Oh, I sent an email uh, mm. yesterday to you guys. I just want to make sure you received my email. And I also would like to, um, to you know, hand out my resume and have a chat with you, have a coffee with you if possible, so I can, um, you know, discuss a possible position, you know, working yeah. for you guys. And, and I did that, man. I did that, like, with maybe six or seven companies, uh, the same companies that I sent the email, right? I went there. And in my third company, I got a, an interview, uh, not an interview, a trial. I got to try. I, the, I talked to the engineer and to the manager, and they said, "Well, come here next week for a trial. You stay with us, um, you know, for two days, just just to see what we do and see if, if you like and see if you can, uh, if we like you as well." Yeah, you know? right, right. Yeah. And and I did that. I did two days trial, and it was awesome. Like the team was great. Just young people, you know, like my age and they're funny and they're smart. And after two days, um, they called me. They said, "Look, if you wanna, if you wanna come start working with us, um, yeah, we we're keen. We're keen to get get you into the team." Dude, that's so and dope. Like, nice. Man. I screamed so loud. I screamed so loud. I was like, yeah, yeah. Because it was my first you know, real job. And right, right. That was, that was the beginning of my career. And man, it was like, I was stoked. I was stoked. It was my wow, that, that's a crazy story, man. Like how not only, of course, going from, from from the hospitality jobs and dishwashing and doing delivering pizzas like how humbling did it have to be you having an engineering degree doing having to do all those jobs for three years and then just starting starting over getting your feet learning the language getting to know people and then it took you you got to be thankful to that mexican guy playing reggaeton on top of you <laughs> pushing you over the edge <laughs> I am, you, I you should you should you should go back and do it. I'm gonna buy you a meal with my engineering salary. Come here, let's have a <laughs> it's that guy that pushed you over the edge. Yeah, it's like I'm out. Nowadays I I love I love reggaeton. I love the I love the Mexican food as well. Oh shit. You know, it's just it was just a phase of my life. Obviously. Yeah, yeah. That's pretty much it. Dude, but not only that, the other thing I wanted to add is like how you had the courage to not just email them. You didn't just email the people and sat back and said, I just hope they call me. You went and then you knocked on their door. Because I think that, not, wh wh what year was this? That was maybe 2018. Dude, so recently, just like a, yeah, a couple of years ago. So it's because, yeah. because nowadays people, majority of people just think 
hey, I'm just going to send an email and apply that way. And then they complain because they can't get jobs. But to, to corroborate what you're saying, that what, what you do still works even here, because a little while ago, I was watching this, I was reading the story of this engineering recruiter. But he wasn't always an engineer recruiter. When he was a student, he had a he had very low grades. He was horrible. And one day he said, I need to get experience. I need to get jobs. So he went to the companies and knocked on the doors. He, he looked for a local company to where he lived. And then he drove there, knocked on the door and said, hey, I'm an intern. I would like to have a job. I know this is what you're looking for. This is my resume. I want to help. And... Luckily, the engineer, the engineer who he was talking to said, you know what? I like your approach. I like that you come here and I like that you want to talk to us. And so he got lucky and he got an opportunity. Well, he got lucky because he looked for his opportunity, you know? So, but man, that's, so it still works. So for anybody out there that says, hey, I can't get a job. Not only do you have to apply, but just go and go to your local companies, you know, just knock on the door and see what happens. Just. Uh, like find other ways that not other people are, are taken advantage of. So how did you like that job? That, that job was, was perfect because it was, um, it was my first job. It was with <clears> something that I wanted to work with. Yeah. Which was structural, structural engineering. And um, the team, the team of engineers, they're very, they're very passionate and they're also willing to mentor because mm. I, I didn't, man, like after, after what, three, four years out of the profession and with no experience, I didn't know much. Yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. So I was, I was really lucky that they had the patience to, um, mentor me and walk me through the, the design process and everything and I'll, i'm still friend with a lot of them I'm, i moved companies but yeah i still talk to them still friend of most of them you know it was yeah. a, it was a great yeah it was a great experience i think um unforgettable unforgettable we used to work designing houses very little things from um very little house extensions to high-end houses and medium-rise apartment buildings. Mm. So it was a very dynamic and we had a variety, of, a huge variety of projects. You know, I had, mm. I had the chance to design like a, a skate park, you know, like a playground. Dude, and that's so dope. Yeah. That's and cool. Yeah. In, in the next week, you would design like you know like a, a house and then in the other week you would design a apartment building you know what i mean like yeah, yeah. different things that challenge you challenge you every time that, that i think that's what make a good company to work on to work at the it's, variety. it's just mm -hmm. the, the variety exactly mm -hmm. yeah yeah pretty much is. so i you know i loved it it was it was a great experience nice man so i do have Honestly, your story is really amazing. Like I'm, I'm so, I have a lot of questions, but I know that I said it's going to take an, about an hour. It's up to you. If you have a hard cut, a hard out, let me know. Uh, do you have to leave or? No, it's okay. Oh, okay. No, Cause... good man. It's Saturday. It's Saturday. Oh, okay, okay. Because I, because I was wondering, I was wondering, um, did you have to validate your degree? when you went from Brazil to Australia or was that part of the, the so did you have to do that at all? Or how, how did you use your degree from Australia, from Brazil to Australia? How do you transfer that knowledge? Yeah. So Paper if you want to get a, if you want to get a, yeah. So if you want to, if you want to get a job in Australia as an engineer, yeah, you don't really need to validate your diploma. You can just go to a company, tell them, look, I'm an engineer. I can do that. You know, mm. if you can do if you can do what you're saying, if you can design things, right, real right. engineer, <laughs> obviously, yeah, um, you don't need to validate your diploma. But the thing is, some companies they like to have a Engineers Australia validation of your diploma because, let's suppose I come from Brazil, right? Mm -hmm. They don't know what's going on in Brazil. 
and what what the university is uh, teaching Brazil, what sort of um, background I have. So it's very important. Uh, so that's one thing that the companies look for, you know, they look, well, okay, so the, if the engineers Australia approved his bachelor's degree, mm. that's fine. I'm happy with that. So it's something I advise if you want to, um, um, if you want to move to Australia, I would advise you to get your get your bachelor's degree validated with the engineers Australia. But it's not essential, you know mm. what I mean? Now, if you want to be the technical responsible for the project, let's right. say you want to sign off on the project, mm -hmm. you have to, and you have to be a registered professional. Registered okay? professional. Okay, so... Yeah, exactly. So um, you, you got to go through the the, Austra the engineers Australia engineers Australia process, and the process is basically you have to prove them why you are an engineer. Okay, mm -hmm. so let's suppose you you graduated in mechanical engineering, and you want to validate your you, you graduated in mechanical engineering in Peru, and you want to validate your diploma in Australia. Mm -hmm. So you got to prove to to that organization why you are a mechanical engineer so what you're going to do you're going to write a career episodes mm. you know you're going to write um three episodes of your career you know like you're going to write um yeah so i worked as a mechanical engineer in this company and those were the challenges that i faced and this is how I resolve these problems. Mm. And then you write something about that. If you, you don't need to, to have work experience, you can just write something about university. You know, mm. you can got it. You can just go back to a, to a subject that you study at university and tell them, look, I'm a mechanical engineer because I know, you know how to design this boat because I had still design at this subject at university. Right. And that's how I did, you know, mm. you write something and obviously you got to translate your, your uh, transcript, you got to translate your resume and, and then mm. everything, you know, the, the doc, all the documentation, the paperwork needs to, needs to be sent to them as well. Mm. That, that, that was pretty much it. You don't have to, but it's a good idea. Right. Right. To validate. Yeah. That makes sense. So, when it comes to structural engineering, have you ever worked with mechanical engineers, like in your field? What kind of, uh, do you just deal with civil engineers or structural, or have you dealt with others that are kind of like, oh, I'm mechanical, but I'm here? Yeah, no, um, we, as, a, as structural engineers, you gotta liaise with a variety of professionals, right? So if you're designing a building, you gotta, um, you got to talk to architects, you got to mm. talk to developers, you got to talk to builders, and you got to talk to mechanical engineers as well. You got to talk to electrical engineers, you got to talk to hydraulic engineers. So you, communication is very important. That's that's another point that, that an engineer, uh, that's another feature that any engineer has to, to, to have really um, have a really solid communication skills yeah. to be an engineer. But yeah, you, you got to talk to to a variety of, of, of person, of people um, in your job. When um, I use, um, I was talking to a, to a high school student these days and he was asking me what a structural engineer does. Yeah. And then I was, uh, I explained that to him doing a human body analogy, mm. you know, and then you've got, you've got the architect, the architect's going to choose the hair color, the eyes color, the skin color, you know, how tall your body is going to be. Mm. And then you've got the structural engineer who's going to design your skeleton. He's going to design the structure that's mm. going to keep your body up straight, you know, and it's going to, you're going to design a skeleton to withstand any lateral loads, you know, like any wind or any forces and self-weight dead loads that can impart on the body. So that's, that's pretty much what the structural engineers do, but you compare that to the buildings. 
And then going beyond that, you know, you've got your cardiovascular system, you've got your brain synapses, you've got your arteries, you've got your veins. That's when the mechanical engineers, the electrical engineers, they all come into place, you know. So you've got this, um, this symbiosis among the engineers, you know what yeah. I mean, when, when you're designing a structure. So going back to your question, yeah, you do have to talk to mechanical engineers and you have to talk to um, yeah. several, you know, several other stakeholders. That gotcha. Was, no, that's, that, that, that's, a, that's a really good analogy. Um, the reason I was asking that is because, uh, so let, let me ask you this another way. Have you seen mechanical engineers do structural engineer work? Have, has that, have you ever seen that or no? I'm curious. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you have? <clears throat> yeah, yeah. No, not... <clears throat> it depends. Mechanical engineers... I'm not a mechanical engineer, so if I'm saying something right, right. Um, wrong, you can, you can correct me. But if you study mechanical engineering, you know how to design um, with steel, right? You know right, how to design yeah. boats, um, steel beams, uh, columns, steel columns. So right. what I see mechanical engineering, mechanical engineers doing that we structural engineer engineers do is mostly related to warehouses, mm. you know, steel sheds, big sheds. Uh, that's okay, what okay. I, that's what I see. That's what I see mechanical engineering, mechanical engineers doing um, as a job that we structural engineers do a lot as well. Gotcha. And, yeah, and but look. They are qualified to do that. Right, you know, right. If you if you want to, you you can design a warehouse if you want because you studied that at university. But when it comes to concrete, reinforced concrete, I don't think you guys have. Uh, uh, yeah, the, I, yeah. We we didn't. Knowledge, right? You you kind of have the high level explanation <laughs> on why concrete is good in compression but not good in tension. Uh, so you kind of have that, and that's pretty much all I remember. Because you have to take statics, dynamics, and then uh, deformable bodies. Those are the three basic engineering and science mechanics or something like that. So that's where I learned all the basic steel and all the like buckling and trusses and all this stuff that, that you're referring yeah. to. Yeah. yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, I was asking because um, I don't know if you've seen this other guy... Uh, this dude, what's his name? Mike Mike Picarda, I think that's his name. He's a civil engineer in California, but uh, he's a, he's also a structural engineer, and he puts out some videos on the structural engineering and stuff like that. And he went over his he went over his transcript in the university, and there were a couple of mechanical engineering classes in it. That's why that's why I got curious. I was like, oh, have you ever seen uh, mechanical engineers do? A structural engineer work but what you said makes complete sense like some parts yes but not other more advanced complicated stuff like for the structural engineers when it's like really niche basically yeah exactly yeah i've got some mechanical engineers friends in brazil and they are specialized in steel design mm -hmm. they most of their works is designing big warehouse but when it comes to the footings, for example, you know, they design the whole superstructure. But when it gets to the footings, you need concrete, you need um, a bit of geotechnical knowledge. Geotechnical, then, yeah. Geotechnical knowledge. Then they would get, um, you know, um, they would outsource that part. Yeah. Do you know what yeah, I mean? So gotcha. you got to work together. Yeah. Yeah. So how, how, uh... Do you see yourself doing geotechnical? How, how are you going to prepare for your license? Is that something they like, say you want to do your own business in the long run? Uh, do you have to work under, are you working under a registered professional right now? Yeah. Yeah. The, the, my boss, the, the, the director of the company, he is an RPQ. So he's a registered professional engineer. Mm. And the way you get the RPQ is you've got to have a number of years um being supervised by an rpq and, mm. <clears throat> and having experience in the field as well right and you gotta yeah you gotta gather a lot of points as well you know doing courses and um 
there's there's a lot of things that you can do along the the uh, along your journey to get to your to your certification that's gotcha. that's pretty much it i'm i'm really close to that um oh nice yeah so it's that's just good just about time yeah yeah for sure uh here to get a in the united states to get a professional engineering license you need uh four years of experience under working for a professional engineer and then you also need to take the fundamentals of engineering exam which is kind of like a certification that gets you ready for the, for the, the for the pe the, yeah so you so you have so you graduate you need four years of experience on their pe you need a fundamentals of engineering exam fe or eit the engineering and training they call it and then you have to take that and you have to take the professional engineering license exam. So you need two exams and four years of experience under a PE, basically. Um, if, if you have a master's, you only need three years of experience. If, if you don't have one, it's four. Um, but yeah, that's, those are the basic requirements here in the United States. I, to be honest, I think that's, that's the correct way, you know, like that, that's perfect. The yeah. way, you know the way america and australia do i think that's the way we should do mm. in every other country because in brazil as soon as you graduate you can sign off on any project mm. you know so a graduate engineer like someone that just left university can sign off on a you know like on a building and without any um, experience or supervision experience or, or nothing yeah you just need to get your your certification mm. in brazil and you can get that certification it doesn't require years of experience or being mentored by by a registered professional you know what i mean and and that's that's something that could be very dangerous yeah um i don't think it changed anything in brazil because i've been would be yeah um, away from six years but that was pretty much um, what happened there and you know yeah have, have there yeah, you're gonna be a have, bit cautious. As, as far as you know have there been issues with the structure like structural uh catastrophes and I, I haven't heard of any from brazil or you hear those on haiti and yeah i mean if you if you look up online, mm, you will you'll find, find them. them. Mm. You will find them. Yeah, it's not something that you know. It's gonna be on on the BBC News. <laughs> that's true. Like, that's true. Yeah. Yeah. But um, unless it's a major thing, you know, that kills. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, but, because if they if they haven't changed the requirements, they might be doing all right. You know, they're like, okay, yeah, because just because they can, it doesn't mean they do. Like that's they, a good point yeah, yeah that's a good point yeah yeah true. It's like you, you let the 40 50 year old engineer it's like i know that you can do it but no we're not letting you do that <laughs> let, let the other guy do it <laughs> yeah 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 oh boy but but you know if you um if you have the option it's you know what i mean like it's you open space for errors for mistakes oh, for sure yeah it's better to you know cut that off in the in the beginning, then wait for someone to make that mistake. And when it comes to engineering, a mistake could cost lives. Exactly. Um, yeah. Especially with but, the structural yeah, and civil and yeah. for yeah, exactly. sure. Um, so one last question that I had was what's, how do you, what would you advise to a young engineer that is just graduating university? You've been in industry for a couple of years now. Um, if you were just graduating, what do you think? What well, What do you wish you would have known uh, just graduating university? Um, yeah, so always when I try to advise someone, I look back on my own my own experience, right? And I see what and I see what I would have changed, uh, what I would have done differently, and one thing that really um, stands out is confidence mm. working on your confidence that's something that i'm talking i'm talking that because 
I was always also an international student, you know, and confidence is, is really hard when you are in a, not in a different country, you know, mm. where you don't speak your language. But anyway, when you have confidence, you can win the client. When you have confidence, you can get your job. You can get mm. your first job. Builders will listen to you if you demonstrate confidence. So that's, that's essential. That's a pivotal you got to be a confident person. And the way you get confidence is being prepared. Mm. You know, you know, you, you know, the saying, um, luck was the saying luck is when uh, preparation meets, meets opportunity. Yeah. You got to, you got to be prepared. You got to be prepared. If you are, if you're prepared, you're going to be confident. And that's, that's the, the, I think one of the most important advice that I tell to um, to fresh engineers, you yeah. gotta prepare yourself in order to when you when you get the opportunity, you're gonna be confident enough to to get it. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah. let's suppose you're a mechanical engineer and you're going for you're going for a job interview to work with um, solid works, right? That's the mm. software you, you yeah, guys yeah. use a lot. Mm -hmm. Yeah, solid yeah. works. So you do your homework, right? You do your homework and you, you're going to train SolidWorks. You, you go, you know, you get home and then you have a look at the software. Uh, you design something. You design, a, maybe try to design some product that, that the company, um, that company develops. Mm. And then you're going to, obviously, you're, gonna, you're not going to be an expert, but in your mind, you're going to be a little bit prepared. Right. right. That's going to give you enough confidence to uh, to do well in that job interview, because you're going to get to the to the interviewer and demonstrate that you actually know what they do in that company because you, you yeah. know, solid works and they need solid works. So you are prepared. So if I if I feel prepared, I'll be confident in the interview and it's. And very likely, I'll get the job. You, you know what I mean? And yeah, yeah, yeah. That works for for anything in life, I think. So confidence is key for everything that you're doing. And to get confident, you got to get prepared. You got to okay. work on it. No one, yeah, no one, no one is born confident, yeah. right? No one's born good on anything. You, you prepare yourself. You work yeah. hard to get there. One hundred percent. Yeah. You know, what I mean that that's that's what I try to um, to advise young people. Look, you, you want to get there, you're gonna have to study, not study because you're gonna understand the technical technical terms or technical aspects of the job, but because it's gonna give you a, a, a peace of mind. You know, it's gonna it it's gonna give you enough confidence. That mm -hmm. that's the thing. You know, when you know what you're talking about. It's uh, you can tell when someone knows what they're talking about, right? Oh, yeah, yeah, if yeah, I, yeah. Some sometimes I'm talking to a builder, and they know that I know what I'm saying, you yeah. know, that, because I designed that, so I yeah. know what I'm, you know, I know what should be in there yeah. and what shouldn't be in there, and they're gonna listen to me because I'm confident enough. Right. That's, right. That, that is that is that, that is such a really good point. Uh, when you know what you're talking about, you have you're less hesitant, you're 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 more straight edge, uh, you're you're more cutthroat per se, and uh, I know that I've been in situations uh, where sometimes I'm stretching myself a little like farther than my knowledge, so that's when so that's when you start really thinking, you start looking away, you really start thinking, putting it together, you're figuring it out as you go, uh, which which is not always bad because you you really are thinking about it. But when you already know it, like when you know it, like you took the palm of your hand, you don't have to think about it. You go boom, you know. So, and that's uh, that's definitely something I've noticed with a lot of expert engineers with a ton of experience. Uh, something that I've experienced myself. When you start getting familiar with your work, you you know what you're doing. You already know who to who to talk to, how to contact, how to do things. Uh, you you are definitely more prepared, like you say, and then you know what you're talking about, what you're doing. So that's definitely, definitely great advice. Uh, it's funny because I, I did make a video about confidence today. 
<laughs> oh, did you? <ya>? Yeah, <laughs> I made a video about confidence. Uh, but yeah. But hey, man, it's been a great conversation. I really, really love knowing your story and all the great, all the pizza jobs and getting that engineering job. 